Hi there, how have you been? It's row 16 of the 30 days of 30 minute workouts and today we're going back into that kind of low intensity area because we're going to break our 30 minutes into 5 minute chunks and we're going to start at 18 strokes a minute, then 20, then 22 and then we're going to go back down to 18 again and back up to 20 and 22. Now your starting pace, I want it to be that kind of 5 out of 10 walking up a flight of stairs or 2k plus 20 to 22 if you have that kind of a training pace. Uh, and then as you go up through the stroke rate, I want you to increase your speed by two seconds each time and then reset back down when you get to 18 again. Simple. All right. So let's get ourselves into a four minute warm up and let's set the machine up first. So on a concept two, that means heading straight to the drag factor and setting that to where you want it to be. If you don't know where to set it, please just set it between four and five because too low isn't the issue. Too high is because it's too heavy a stroke, which for the people that aren't on a concept two, when you're setting your resistance dial, set it to a point where it feels nice but not too heavy and you have to struggle against it okay next up if you can please set your monitor to eye height so you don't have to look up and you don't have to look down and finally please adjust your foot plates so that as you come to the front of the stroke you can get your shins pointing vertically comfortably if you're set too high that can be a bit tricky if you're set too low you can go scooting past and your backside will go out from underneath you and you'll lose power and there's a possible injury but it's mostly about power so we're going to do this at around about 20 strokes a minute and I want you to start just thinking about enough power as though you were standing up because you're going to think about the connection timing between the push of your feet and your hands connecting to the handle, okay, uh, to the machine. They're connecting, there. you get what I mean. Right, I'll explain. <laughs> Here we go in three, two, one, let's go. So I threw myself because I thought when I demonstrated I might start the timer but I hadn't. So what I mean is that you push with your feet at exactly the same time your hands connect the handle to the machine so that means it's that biting point where on the concept two it's when it connects to the flywheel and so that power goes in or on a water wheel it's when the strap connects to the blades that spin round but the important part is that you push with the feet at exactly the same time your hands connect and so if you have a forwards tilt over your hips and straight arms when you push with your feet and you hold that position for half of the leg drive all that power just floods into the machine and that's where your pace comes from and speaking of pace now that we're a minute in you can just increase so that the exertion feels kind of what it would be like if you were just walking up a constant flight of stairs like climbing the Empire State Building or something so your heart rate will be up your breathing rate will be up but you won't feel like you're working really hard you'll still be able to have a conversation you can keep on going and it's not like you're saying hang on I'm going to have to stop after a couple of flights here okay and this is pretty much your starting pace for today's row and then you just go two seconds faster for the 20 strokes a minute and two seconds faster again for the 22s okay let's put one foot on the ground and continue rowing <sighs> try not to let your technique fall apart just because you have one leg on the ground the whole point here is that it should actually simplify your technique you should find it easier to come forwards with your shin in that vertical position you should find it easier to tilt over your hips let's swap feet and lean in forwards into that one o'clock tilt towards the front of the machine keeping your arms straight because you've only got one leg strapped in it should be a lot easier to get your body into the angles it needs to be as so you'll progressively open them up through this warm-up ready for today's main row okay both feet in tighten your straps and straighten your legs and roll with your back and arms so swing over your hips initially to pick up that tension of the flywheel or the chain or the strap 
and then pull in your arms. Then release your arms and rock forwards. So you simply go swing, pull, push, rock. Swing, pull, push, rock. Okay, let's roll to the front of the machine with straight arms and a forwards tilt and just press out from the front. Not too powerfully, because I want you to work on holding this position of the straight arms and the forwards tilt as you push your feet in and also that timing between the push of your feet and your hands connecting the handle to the machine. Okay, one more here. Uh, they got to change them round for the first time in ages. I normally say timing and then, but hey, I'm not always saying the same thing. <laughs> I'm pretty much saying always the same thing in the warm up, but it's important that you do it in the right order. So anyway, right, we're going to do what I always do or have been doing so far this time round on the 30 days of 30 minute workouts where I'm going to play the video that I recorded last year. So you'll see a different version of me, a much younger, much handsome uh, version of me. He'll take you through the 30 minute row and then I will join you at the end for some for a cool down and uh, some stretching. So I'm fluffing my lines. But anyway, enjoy the row. I'll see you in half an hour. Right, are you ready for this then? So we're starting at 18 strokes a minute, round about 2k plus 20 to 22 pace. Um, and yeah, and then we'll change up after five minutes. So here we go then in three, two, one, let's go. Oh, right, now I'm gonna, I, said, I know I said I'm gonna talk technique, but I'm gonna quickly explain my pace first. I'm just gonna see where I naturally fall in for 18 strokes a minute right now. I'm gonna, kind of think, yeah, plus 22. I'm going to take it nice and gentle today because I'm still a little bit wary about the damage that I did to my intercostals, but also because I've got a Zwift bike race later tonight and I don't want to exhaust myself either for it or ahead of tomorrow's top tier row or top intensity row so right let's do a back to basics shakedown through techniques there's been i think it's been at least a week since i've talked about it right from the top of the row and kind of broken it down into all of the little tips that I'd probably give you. So it's probably worthwhile doing. Let's just hope I don't miss any of the <laughs> or the next five minute change up as a result of talking so much. So, right, here we go. Like I said in the warm up, the important big thing to remember about the rowing stroke is that the power comes from your legs so don't think of this as a pulling motion obviously yes the handle pulls on the chain which makes the flywheel go but you start that with the power coming from your legs through your body into your arms and your arms are straight as the force goes from your legs through your body and into your hands and if you think about rowing being more of a pulling motion then what tends to happen is that you may have a tendency to pull and grab too early on the handle which will basically just reduce your efficiency and power and really if you're rowing you want to be going at a good pace that you're capable of and not lose that power just due to inefficient technique. So 
Best thing to think about is pushing the machine away from you with your feet. You just think about push it into the wall in front of you. But you still need to get the power into your hands. It's not very good saying push with your feet, but if you don't connect your hands to the flywheel, then you're not going to go anywhere. Well, you'll go backwards, but that's it. <laughs> so, the most efficient way to get that power into the machine to then be able to use your arms later to add in power is, as you come forwards, lean slightly in towards the front of the machine to run about one o'clock on the clock face and have your arms out in front of you nice and straight but relaxed, loose, loose shoulders you should be able to kind of flop around a little bit as you're coming forwards I talk about zombies <sighs> because they're nice and loose and relaxed you never see a tent zombie. Okay, three strokes, and then we'll go up to 20 strokes a minute after this one. You ready? Here we go. So, tw 20 strokes per minute, and just increase your pace by two seconds. Now, hopefully what's gonna have happened is that in order to increase your pace you are pushing a little bit harder with your legs and that gives you a faster drive phase of the stroke which means that you're putting more power into the machine from a greater push of the feet but also, you're taking two extra strokes per minute compared to what you were before. And if you figure you might cover around about 10 meters per stroke, then that's an extra 20 meters every minute. So anyway, your pace will have gone up, hopefully, naturally, just by increasing your stroke rate, is what I'm saying. Anyway, where was I? So, forward lean, arms straight, but relaxed. You don't want to come forwards like a rigid, <laughs> piece of iron as you're coming forwards you want to be nice and loose because what you're looking to do is as you drive you let the power flow through your body rather than trying to resist it by being tense I don't know if you've ever done the thing where you stand with your fists by your side and straight arms and then somebody comes along and tries to lift you up by pushing up on your fists if you have straight arms it's really easy to lift someone up if you have nice relaxed arms it's almost impossible to lift someone up because that power is just being sent through your body rather than straight into your biceps now I know what you're thinking hang on that's a weird analogy surely that would mean straight, tense arms would be better 
And trust me, the thought occurred to me too while I was saying that analogy. But <laughs> the difference is what I said about when your arms are loose, that power is going right up through your body, up through your shoulders, down your back, and then planting back into the ground again. And that's why they can't lift you. So that was a long-winded way of saying, keep your arms loose as you come forwards. And then as you push your feet into the machine, you brace against the handle, obviously, because otherwise you just let go of the handle. You go, <laughs> so you have to brace against it. But as you start the drive, you still don't really go for a pulling sensation. It's just, it's like if you're hanging from a bar from above you. You don't pull against that bar. You just hang off it. And that's exactly what's happening here. You're just hanging off the handle. Okay, three, two, one. Right, up to 22 strokes a minute. And another two seconds faster. Same as before, just a little increase in that push from your legs should be enough to give you a faster drive speed and those extra two strokes per minute then combine together to increase your pace as well as your stroke rate and what you should have felt if you're doing this hang off the handle thing is that it's like you're a little bit heavier because you're pushing harder with your legs you're putting more force into the handle when you hang and really I'm quite uh, pleased, let's <laughs> say, self-congratulatory pleased with that idea of like hanging from a pull-up bar. If you were just to hold on to one so that your feet are off the ground, but you're just dangling there basically you wouldn't say you were pulling on the bar would you it's just that weight of your body against the bar that's keeping you up in the air like holding on to it and that's exactly the same with the push of your feet connecting to the handle here you're just hanging off it that was a really deep discussion about just the handle wasn't it here's me thinking I'd race through technique today but if you have a forward lean arm straight nice and relaxed and then you make sure you have a good posture and that means being up on your sit bones as you come forwards okay so your shoulders should be past your hips and that forward lean should be because you have tilted over your hips rather than it being about kind of crunching forwards in a golem-esque little ball 
Okay? I'm gonna be up and powerful. For those on the podcast, apologies if the stroke rate went off, but I was demonstrating a golem esque ball. But nice, powerful, hinged, tilted over your hips. Core is braced as you drive. Chin should be neutral, which is why I say about the monitor at eye height. So keep that chin down and neutral. And hopefully that'll prevent you from looking up in the air as you drive. Seat slide. Like I said before the warm up, you want to slide far enough so that your legs or your shin, sorry, are pointing vertically. Try not to go past it by too much, as that causes power leaks. But if you can't quite get there, then either your flexibility needs improved, or your foot stretchers are too high. Now hang on, two strokes, one more. Back down to 18s. Whew. There you go. So, that was a quick first half of today's row, wasn't it? We're well past, or we're 15 seconds past the Bon Jovi point of this row. And that's what we're doing. So just an increase in pace and rate and this next 18 strokes a minute chunk should settle your heart rate down and things so that the workout doesn't feel too intense but it shouldn't really even at 22s it might rise to about 6 out of 10 on the effort scale but shouldn't really go above that but do try and stay back at the original pace that you rode at 18 strokes a minute don't back right off the pace try and lock back into it so quick tip about flexibility if you are not able to come forwards with your shins at vertical because it could be a flexibility thing not everyone can get into this position so what to do is in between rows okay don't do it while you're rowing but try to spot how far you can slide and also where you need the seat to be for your shins to be vertical and then get two post-it notes put one where you want to be where the seat would roll to in a vertical position put that post it right in front of the roller under your seat and then the other one put a little bit between where you can manage to get to and where you want to get to and then start rowing and what will happen is that if you try to gradually increase how much the seat slides when you hit that new point you'll feel a little click as the roller from your seat goes over that first post-it note and so you do that for a session and then the next time you're on 
just move it a tiny bit closer and then keep on doing that so that every time you manage a row where you hit that first note in the next one move it further forwards until you get to the point where you need to be and that way you'll gradually increase your flexibility over a period of four or five rows rather than finding that point and putting like a towel or a bungee cord around it and just slamming into it at full speed and brute forcing some kind of flexibility which doesn't teach you anything and could injure you whereas that little feedback note from the post-it that little click so all you need and I can say over the course of a few sessions your flexibility will increase other thing to say is don't worry if your heels come off the foot plate a tiny bit you'll hear people talking about how you shouldn't lift your heels you can just not so that they're parallel to the floor two strokes one more up to 20 strokes a minute right and then the last thing to say about body position remember you're going two seconds faster here is your knees you the two things well well just one actually you don't want to have your knees together as you come forwards okay if you're knock kneed it's really hard to get that power in it's really awkward actually never rode like that before me no likey <coughs> so you want your knees kind of shoulder width apart maybe not quite that wide basically if your knees were closer they'd be tucked inside your armpits that's the perfect width but because of your posture and foot stretcher height your knees should still be underneath your armpits and then when you're ready just push those feet into the machine hold your arms straight and that forward lean and the power from your legs will flood into the machine and then once your legs are about halfway through you'll find the power will start to fade and that is when you finally swing your back from that forward lean to a backward lean and then as you start that swing you then start to finally pull the handle into a finish so your straight pull straight pull your arms really are meant to be straight for that long straight pull and then as you pull the best position as far as I say it is the handle at sternum height and elbows through your sides you may need your elbows to go slightly flared out because you want to keep your wrists nice and flat rather than bunny hands where you end up like this if you can go wrists flat 
sternum height, elbows through so that you squeeze your shoulder blades together, then that's how you employ your back muscles, which are much stronger than your delts, biceps and forearms, which you use if you do that weird high finish, which just runs the risk of rotator cuff issues in your shoulders, tennis elbow in your forearms and possible torn biceps if you don't have the powerful body strong enough to deal with those really high forces whereas sternum height with a handle elbows through wrist flat and your back muscles should be good your back is big and strong enough to deal with that power just make sure and keep your shoulders down don't shrug them up to your ears if you get like neck pain that's often why okay two one here we go 22 strokes a minute this is our last interval So, you pull the handle in and that creates like a spring of your arms coming through your sides and your body wants to bounce your arms away again only a few inches but it's enough to create a momentum that all you have to do is continue your arms moving forwards you're not really using any muscles at all apart from maybe stability muscles in your arms and then as your arms come forwards that triggers your forward lean that rock over your hips So that, by the time the handle is past your knees, you have straight arms and that forward tilt and are in the perfect body position for the start of the next stroke. And all you have to do is bend your knees to recover to the front of the machine, ready for the next stroke. And so because that forward momentum of your hands and back is already moving you towards the front of the machine, you don't need to tug your feet against the foot straps. You'll see loads of people pulling themselves forwards and the big problem with that is that it collapses your posture so suddenly everything's wrong I'm leaning backwards as I'm rolling forwards and my knees pop up so suddenly I have to do this really weird kind of alley-oop to get into the right position and just doing that what four times absolutely exhausted me because I'm using muscles I don't need to use not only the muscles to tug me back up the rail but trying to get out of that terrible lean back posture into this forward lean and straight arms now, the last thing to say as we come into a close 
is handle height through the whole stroke should be pretty much on an even plane so neutral in front of you at the start of the stroke pull into sternum height and then back out in the same rhythm and at the same height so in out let that bounce that rebound take care of in out it just comes back out at the same height so you're not scraping the handle down okay if you sense you are doing this try to stop it even on a boat there's no need you might want to have a small tap down on the boat but you're certainly not scraping it all the way down so that the chain flaps off the bottom of the machine okay so it's nice and neutral straight line and that pretty much covers most of the stroke I didn't even get a chance to talk about other rubbish because <clears throat> we're done there you go now that was definitely a gentle roll for me I was let's see plus 22 almost 23 for the first one then plus 21 plus 18 so yeah so I was basically it's even further back off my I was like second extra off my pace guide sometimes the slow ones are the best workouts I really hope you enjoyed that one I know I certainly did I really did feel like a proper workout today so I'm quite happy wasn't that tough as low intensity so hopefully you're okay to get into our two minute cool down um Sorry, I didn't pause there, it's because I said, did I just say inti? As though I was very Scottish. Get into our two minute to cool down. Hopefully you've had a drink and you've got yourself composed and you're okay to get into this. So get yourself strapped in. I'm going to do this at around about the same pace you did the warm up at, okay? So here we go then in three, two, one. Let's go. Oh. I mean, I constantly talk about the benefits of those long, slow rows. When you look at any sport, it's about performance speeds and stuff there's such a large component of long slow stuff like uh, I was listening to again because I've I've got really interested in this high rocks stuff I was listening to a few podcasts by some of the elite athletes in that and these are people that can do like 16 minute 5k's and things so really fast but they're saying here yeah, Although I do fast sessions, I also do 13, 14 mile runs at a time, long, slow runs, just to build up that aerobic base and basically just teach the body to get efficient at the movements needed. That's part of, well, it's pretty much both sides of the entire reason why low rate rows are just so important because not only does it build up that fitness foundation, develops your blood system, your mitochondria and stuff, but you also just get time to concentrate on technique and teaching your body to become more efficient in the movement of how it does it by slowing the stroke rate and the intensity down you give yourself much more space to improve, to concentrate on what you're doing. Okay, three more strokes for me and then I'm done on the cool down. Hopefully you are too, but of course you can continue to cool down. You don't have to join me for the stretching or you can, of course, or if you don't have time for either, make sure and please at least stretch your quads and your hamstrings and if you do have time do your glutes as well but not in the shower I don't want you to trip and fall over or slip and fall over 
or you can join Stretchy John, he'll take you through a stretchy mat version of stretching or I will take you through on the rowing machine version if you don't have room. So, feet back in the foot plates, straps slightly loose, brace your feet against those straps, legs straight, hands in the air, fold your body down towards your legs. And again, I really want to impress the importance that that is a fold forwards. You're not coming in and rounding your upper or lower back to get down. You're not holding onto your ankles and pulling yourself forwards. You're just folding down, okay, like a hinge closing. And don't worry if this is only as far forwards as you can get. As long as you get that stretch into your hamstrings, that's what matters. And hopefully through time, you'll be able to get a little bit further forwards. You can add in a tiny little bit of a rock if you wish, but that's kind of more once you get a bit more fluid with that stretch and you feel it's working. My hamstrings are still just so tight. So glutes next, one leg up on the rail, bring your other foot over so that your heel is in the kind of dent crook of your knee. Bring this knee across your body so you've got a straight line between your face, your knee and your foot. Hold it in place with your arm and then rotate your torso round. Can help to hold onto the back of the machine for stability. Um, and then you should get a nice stretch into that glute, okay? You should. Uh, the how much force you push this or pull this knee across your body and that kind of how much you rotate into it, that's kind of what's controlling how much of a stretch and where that stretch is happening. But there's other things like posture and um, whether you have any kind of backwards rotation of your hip and things that's kind of fighting against what's going on. So do, let's change legs, so exactly the same thing but the other leg. Um, do really pay attention to how subtle shifts to how you're holding your body, how you're, what angles your, your leg is at, whether your foot is up against your knee, that totally loses the stretch for me, whereas I can, if I come down lower, I get slightly more, bigger stretch, so um, I might have longer legs than you, I might have shorter legs than you, so find what works for you, as long as you're getting a really good stretch into your glute right now, that's all that matters, okay? Let's move to uh, quads next. You can put one finger on the monitor or hold on to the monitor for stability if you wish. Flick your foot up so that your heel touches your backside and then hold it in place for a little bit of a pull against the foot to just help that stretch along. And hold on to the upper part of your foot, okay? Um, that'd be kind of more the bridge rather than down towards the balls, the ball of your feet and your toes and things because you're wanting to stretch your hamstrings here. You don't want to kind of pull in your toes and end up stretching the your shins, so they're kind of the muscles down the front of your shins. I mean, you can stretch them independently if you wish, especially if you're, if you're the type of person who tugs yourself forwards of the foot straps, then don't do that. But if you do, then that's what you find is you can really tire out, I've just swapped legs for the way, you can really tire out those muscles in the front of your shins from pulling yourself forwards. Oh, is he gonna fall? Is he, cause he caught it? Oh, he has. Oh no, he's good again. Ah, ah, no. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. If you do tug yourself forwards, then um, that muscle right down there, I don't know if you can see it, don't really have that big a muscle, that down there can get really sore, so um, you might want to point your toes down and stretch that muscle if that happens to you. So let's do hip flexors next. One knee on the ground, toes up behind it, uh, one foot in front of you with your knee above it. You should have right angles on both legs. And then push the hip that has the knee on the ground forwards with a good posture to open up the angle of your back leg and close down the angle of your front leg. And you should then get a fantastic stretch into your hip flexor. Well, I am right now, so I'm hoping you are too. Uh, and this is when I summon the great Jeff Cavalier from Mathley Next. Where are you, Jeff? Come and join us. Wouldn't that be nice, eh? If you just suddenly wandered in, unlikely he's gonna come and visit me all the way in Glasgow, but hey. Uh, because, let's swap legs, um, lots of people blame their hip flexors, like, and we stretch into it, uh, blame the hip flexors for tightness and things, whereas actually quite often it can be your hamstrings that are tight, or even your quads that are tight, and that's what's causing um, any kind of discomfort and things, or um, reduced mobility and whatever, whereas it's easy to blame the hip flexor. You should still, I mean, after a row and things, still stretch it, but... Um, 
you get people who will spend like <laughs> half the not half the life, but will spend a long time with mobility through their hip flexors, which are, where actually it's something else. So um, Jeff Cavalier on the Athlinex uh, YouTube channel has a great video about how to test whether it's your whether you have tight hip flexors or not. So I recommend watching it if you're at all concerned about it. Right, forearms next, hands together in front of you, push them together and then bring them down in front of you so they're kind of in front of, in fact, as I do this, my thumbs are touching my heart rate monitor. So that's kind of the height that's at. But basically what you want is a, you want your forearms to be parallel to the floor and then your fingers are kind of pressed up together so you've got that nice right angle between them. And that gives you a nice stretch into your fingers and a nice stretch on your forearms and your wrists, which again, in today's row, probably didn't take that much of a, a beating, but um, there's always a chance that your fingers did get a little bit crampy after half an hour straight, just at those low rates. You never know. I mean, that's why I tend to, as I'm coming forwards, I'll sometimes like play the piano on the handle. As I release, I'll kind of, I'll loosen my fingers and kind of give them a wiggle just to try and stop that cramping happening. Shoulders next, hands straight in front, in front of you, hello. And then across your body, and then just use your other arm to kind of anchor it against you and then just pull it against your body a little bit. It's hard to describe, but hopefully you can see it. Sorry all you podcast people, I know you can't, but um, I recommend having just loading up one of these videos and just take a quick look at the stretches that I do so you've got an idea of what I'm talking about. And then you can follow me. And this should give you a nice stretch up in your delts. Um, I was doing something today called uh, devil presses. Ugh, and they've really kind of hit my delts today, strangely. But basically, it's like you do a press up. Let's swap arms. Do a press up on dumbbells. So you're holding the kind of the handle of a dumbbell. So you do the press up. And then you do like a burpee jump in to so your feet are in. You swing the dumbbells um, between your legs and then up into like a, a shoulder press up in the air and then back down the ground and do that. And oh, good grief, it's tough. Uh, yeah, but it's also a sign, does it, it, tough is good. Tough is good because it means that I'm working in ways that I haven't before. Um, I've said before, but it's the comfort zone that I've found with rowing, whereas now that this high rocks training stuff I've done, oh, nowhere near a comfort zone. I'm so far out of my comfort zone, it's uncomfortable. So let's do um, biceps next. So hands straight behind you, so you're a ski jumper. Whoosh, and then rotate those thumbs outwards. Oh, I've done something to my wrist. Ow. Um, yeah. See, that's the thing with, anyway, and rotating your thumbs out stretches your bicep. That's the thing about doing like a nice concentrated stretching session at the end of any kind of exercise, is it does give you a chance to kind of give yourself a sit rep across your body and think, does anything hurt? Like, so I'm gonna go in and investigate what I'm, what's going on with my wrist, maybe give a little bit of massage, ice or whatever, see if, I think it's just like a, a tendon's kind of gone slightly misaligned, so it's kind of clicking against the bone or something. So I'll just give it a little massage, see if that, um, fixes it, because it only hurt just then as I rotated, rotated round, so right in there. Uh, triceps is our last stretch, so put your hand in the air, but then it gets lost and goes down your back. Okay, so you touch your spine, your elbow is slightly pointing up in the air, but then you can help it along with your other hand, push it back so it points straight to the sky, and then if you want to lean to the side to stretch your lats, you can, or you can just concentrate on your triceps. Whether you want to try and elongate your shoulder, it's up to you. I'm a little bit in two minds as to whether that's good or not to kind of pop it up. Especially as I mean, I've got so much shoulder issues, I think that may be bad. <laughs> so, but like all the stretches I do, these are just the ones that I do. So if you have a better way to stretch your triceps, then do what you do. I'm changing arms. And why not tell me if you have a, a favorite way to stretch um, one of your muscles and I don't cover it, then just tell me and I'll do that instead. Because this is what I've done and always done. So again, I get the feeling that much like the just the training principles that my body's probably just got used to this being how I stretch. And so it's probably not quite as efficient anymore. So maybe if I changed, did some other stretching, I might get better, you never know. So there we go. That's us all done with day 16 of the 30 days of 30 minute workouts or rows, whatever you want to call them. I do hope you enjoyed this one, a good low intensity one. Um, and yeah, it's just great for burning calories and working on technique and all that stuff. So I really hope you enjoyed it and that you will join me in row 17. Um, and then we'll just, uh, have I done, I think I've done comfort zone, haven't I, as a hashtag. I forgot a hashtag yesterday, say, hopefully someone would have said, uh, bon Jovi, but right, actually let's do that. Let's do Bon Jovi plus one because we missed yesterday's hashtag. So let's have Bon Jovi plus one as today's hashtag just to say you got to the end of the video. All right. So thank you once again for joining me. I will see you in one of my many other videos, if not row 17 of the 30 days of 30 minutes. Until then, take care. Be well. Bye-bye.